Our next guest was once famous for being a Spice Girl, but is now famous for just being herself. She set herself firmly on the road to standalone stardom with her hit single and her sparkling new album. It's the all-time most gorgeous United Nations Goodwill Ambassador, Jerry Hallowell. <laughs> It's good to see. Welcome back. It's you, good to be back. Were just you me. here before? The last time, I have to say, it was, it was there were other girls with you. Yeah, there's a whole it bunch was. of you. So what happened? I've got you all to myself now. <laughs> see, that's what's happened. Yeah. Well, you're a huge success. Uh, you've got millions in the bank. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all the Spice Girls have millions in the bank. But why did you take the risk of going solo? I think um, in life, of course. You might be frightened of lots of things, but I believe in facing your fears. You know, of course I'm afraid, but I'd rather try and, and, and fail rather than not try at all. I've got this philosophy that I don't want to be a grandmother and think, if only, you know, so, and this was something instinctively I wanted to do, so, you know, I had to do it. Well, I have to tell you that uh, I've been listening to the new album, and it's, yeah. a, it's not just a relief, it's a positive pleasure to be able to say, that it's, it's rich and interesting and dancey and if I was 50 years younger I'd be dancing to it all night, as, no, as it is. No, I want you to dance, <laughs> it's for everybody, it's ages, for well, very I, I generous danced, I danced to it for 23 minutes before I collapsed and I can tell you. <laughs> That's good. And, uh, and anyway, the, album, the album's out today and the single uh, Look At Me is uh, reached number two and we've got the video of it, here it is. Look at me You can take it all because this is free maybe next time use your eyes and look at me i'm a drama queen if that's your thing baby i can even do reality that's me <laughs> There are lots of people in that song, aren't you? You're a vamp, you're a virgin, you're a business girl. You can make the trains run on time, which nobody else in the world <laughs> Yeah, that's true. But, you know, the idea of that is that in a, in a day, a woman, in the morning she's a mother, then she goes to work, then she's, you know, she can uh, be a friend, and then she'll go out and be sexy. We take on lots of roles, I'm sure you do. You know, you're a pres TV presenter, but I'm sure you're a, a lover, a fighter, a disco dancer. <laughs> you're lots of things in life. I don't look quite as good lying on a rug in a bra as you do. <laughs> I don't know. Use your imagination, viewers. <laughs> you tell me more about this album because I, I, I don't want to sound patronising here, but did you really write this thing yourself? I do. I mean, I've always, you know, been really into words and poems, and and the way I do it is just literally just write how I feel, and and, and I've always got a dictaphone with me in the middle of the night. I might come up with melodies, and th and that's basically how it starts. And I just let my imagination go. Go mad. Well, it's working with me. Your album's going around me, with me like a faithful little dog, actually. Oh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I really am impressed with the words. And you're, you're very, uh, you're actually good at language generally. Well, you I you sing one song in Spanish, which, yeah. which is very impressive. And your accent is very, very convincing. I suppose it would be because your, your mum's, your half she Spanish. She is aren't? indeed. I'm totally tapping into my Spanish roots. Actually, my, my mum um, had these Mills and Boons books all in Spanish and she could help me with one line. It says, Donde está el hombre con fuego en la sangre? Which means, where is the man with fire in his blood? <laughs> well, some of us are still around. You know. <laughs> Sean Connery. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Our, yeah. Our heads are coming through the top of our hair, but we've still got it. It you know. doesn't mean a you, thing. It's you, fine. You couldn't, you know, I love that song, and you, and especially when it slides in, you couldn't sing a little bit now. If I just handed you this lollipop, uh, I just happen to have it with me. Uh, yeah. Only if you join in. Can I dance Wait a, a little second. bit with Wait. me? The dancer. I'll dance it. No singing. Kind no of singing a more of a visual thing okay. going on. Okay. Okay. Chico Latino, oh, ay, 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 la, 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 ay, 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, that's one of the more one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life. I... <laughs> oh, it's in everybody. You well, see, that's the thing. I think music, you know, shouldn't alienate anybody, no matter how old you are. Yeah. Apparently, you went celibate for this album. Yeah. It is true. I mean, not that I had the opportunity, you know, to break that vow, but I know I just write better songs when I'm not having sex because all the energy goes into the, to the writing. It's true. I don't know why, but it does. It's like I'm making love with the music. So when you put that CD on, wow, I'm going to sound frustrated. <laughs> well, it's, it's not really my place to say so at my age. But has there been any change now the album's nope. completed? No. <laughs> Maybe you can give me some tips. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but although I have, I have this documentary come out, I don't know if you saw it, but since then I've had a lot of letters inviting me around for tea. Mm. That's you, 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 actually, you talk about TV presenters, and you're very, very good with TV presenters. You've certainly got me out of, eating out of your hand. But you've, you've, done, you've done some TV presenting. You, you, you were down there in Turkey or somewhere, you were a TV presenter. Um, that's when I, I was studying um, English at the time, and... Um, I did go to Istanbul once a week and love that fridge. I can work anything, you know. <laughs> it was that kind of thing. You were presenting refrigerators to the yes, Turks. Yes, I was. Yeah, and they loved yeah. it and it was fine. And so how did you present the refrigerators to the Turks? I mean, I'm sure it was a big success. just love it. Love it like it's your mother. Yeah. Well, it's a hot country, I suppose, you know. That's yeah, a fridge is, you know, a good thing. Yeah. Well, speaking as objectively as I can, I couldn't help noticing you've been on the front page of The Sun again with this, uh, this image that, shall we say, is associated with the new... A new single. Do you, do you know what album. my view on the whole me? I've come to the conclusion why, as a nation, we are obsessed with image and media. And I just think, in the olden days, we used to talk over the garden fence about, oh, what's going on at number 10? And have you seen what she's wearing? And, and I just think that community doesn't exist anymore. So what we've got in common is, that it's the newspaper. So we pick that up and go, have a good gossip. And I just think there are street characters, you know, soap opera characters. And I'm just one of them. That's it. Well, you're absolutely right. I come from the olden days, and I can tell you that... Uh, <laughs> was it good then? It, well, it was, because the big difference between then and now was that you did gossip, and uh, those who knew, knew, and those who didn't know, didn't. And that was the fun. Yeah. And now there's no everybody real gossip, because everybody knows everything, and it yeah. just drives you nuts, and you can't do anything. Yeah. You can't go out. Which is, imagine why you've bought a fortress. Your new house is... It's really a world of its own, isn't it? I, I saw it in the documentary. Yeah. Don't you sort of rattle around in there? It's big enough to hold a Formula One Grand Prix. It's so. kind of, you know when you just think it was a little girl's dream and I was fulfilling that fantasy, really. And, you know, I have to invite people around a lot when my mother comes to stay. And um, so if anyone's lonely and need a room, I've got one, <laughs> £25 a night. That's what my mother says now. You can always open a hotel. And, um, but I, it was an old monastery and I've got nuns living next door. So it's quite nice. They keep me company. Whoever decided to build a monastery next door to a nunnery? Well, apparently the nuns used to hang out with the monks, cook for them. Oh, right. I go around there and they all love a... They're wild. They have a drink. I, I mean, when I first got my video edited, I was worried about what they would think, because obviously I'm dressed up These as a nun. The, nun. the nuns, the nuns, not the monks, yeah. the nuns. Not yeah. The, yeah. They've gone. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so I went around there and they loved it. You know, they totally got it. They like to have a good l laugh. They say, so I should have brought them on the show. Mm. so funny. For, <coughs> for a couple of minutes, I've got you right where I want you, and I can talk philosophy to you. Go and on, then. Give I, me I some. You, and I've actually thought a lot about people's careers, and I think there are two main things in someone's career. There's, there's talent, and there's the ability to manage your talent. And it's almost worse to have less of the second thing than of the first. You know, and what, one of the things that I think impresses me about you is you're actually sorting it all out yourself. You're making things happen. Nobody's in control of you. Can you go on like that? At the end of the day, if my single doesn't go to number one, if, my, um, if it all goes wrong or if it all, I don't know, I'm not a success in any department, it's me that everyone's going to point the finger at. So I'd rather than be my mistakes and not anybody else's. I take people's advice, absolutely. And, but I just think, you know, I'm, I try and be an artist that is from my heart and be passionate about it so, you know, I know where I'm going most of the time. But sometimes I get lost but and I'll fail and muck up just like everybody else. But fame is really one of the, what draws you forward. It was, since you were a kid, you, you wanted it, to be it famous. It changes. It changes your perception on fame. It, you know, I come from, you know, a pretty poor background and sort of chase it as a way out almost, like a lottery ticket. But now, 
you know, so there's this double-edged sword to it. Now I can do good things with it. I can lend my fame for something good, like the UN. But then also I get a chance to be very creative. I've given a second chance. That's brilliant. And but and there's peace. Well, I like being famous, of course. There's a, an ego in there that goes. He likes the attention. I wouldn't lie about that, of course. I, <laughs> <laughs> look at me. Yeah, great. <laughs> I'm impressed. I've been, I've, I was impressed, pretty impressed with you anyway. But it's been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>